Happy Friday. It's Jane from Surface Anthology and Chalk Mercantile. How is everybody doing? As usual, I'm waiting for my, my Facebook link to get all you text club people on here. But I have something really, hopefully, you'll find interesting today. Um, a little show and tell and a repair. Why isn't this showing up? There we go. And copy link. Head over. And I have to choose people to send it to. Oh. All right. So a little bit about me. I, you'll hear me use the terms heirloom and authentic and all of that good stuff. And I have been obsessed with antiques, fine painted finishes. You know, my friends call me fancy. Thank you, Tammy. Tammy is from Flippin' Furniture. I adore her. And I am fancy, I guess. <laughs> but I've been like this since I was a child. And, you know, I'm, I didn't grow up as a rich person but there are ways to get your hands on some of this beautiful stuff. But it's beyond that. Um, I just love things that get more and more beautiful as they age. You know, glass, furniture, leather, linen fabric, you know, all of that. And I wanted to show off a little bit of my collection. Um, when I find, look at this, I, I'm a quilter too, and you guys saw my my strawberries, um, let me show you again, <laughs> my little spring strawberries. These are made from silk velvet and silk ribbon, and I made these in glass beads. And I know that hopefully when I'm long gone, if somebody finds these, they're not going to throw them out. But they'll get more beautiful. They might fade a little. Um, as I, I use them, I have the actual uh, steel shards to sharpen my embroidery needles and my quilting needles. And I am I know that they'll get more beautiful with age, even as they fade. But I collect this stuff. Look at this little stocking I got at a, um, wasn't the Country Living Fair, it was another one. But a woman took these little hand-stitched scraps from these quilts that were getting, you know, thrown out. They. They were used and loved, and she made these little Christmas stockings. Here's a doll quilt. This is really old, but look at how sweet this is. I am over the moon with this. It's a log cabin. Of course, it's all hand sewn and hand quilted. And look, if you could see this, they patched the backing for this and the stitching's beautiful. So this really, this is just floats my boat as they say. And it's not just that I possess it, it's that I know somebody worked on this. They made this, you know, in a loving way for a child to put on her dolls or his. This could be over some little teddy bears. And you know, I see them somewhere and I go, I have to, I have to get that. I, somebody, somebody made that for some child and I can't just let it go. I have to collect it. It's very strange. Um, now this, when I had my shop, I would have people come in and sell me um, their belongings. You know, they'd want to sell it and... I, a woman walked in and she had this along with some amazing old thread cases from the 1800s, things like that. But this I kept. I had to have it. This says on top, let's see if I could close in on this. I don't know if I can. Let's see. Yes. So this says Alva Johnson, 1822. So this is 200 years old and it's 
a desk. And if you watch this, now I have to come back out again. And this is heavy, heavy, heavy. But it's a sea captain's desk. And it opens up like this. Right? I got this and I was like, oh my God, I was, I was in heaven. And look, here's a little photograph I put in. Here's a pillow I made for somebody. This has got to be 30 years ago. <laughs> Embroidery when I was in my 20s. But look at this. Look what was in here. This letter that somebody mounted on this paper. It's January 9th, 1815. And there's actual stitching on this letter. I mean, it's just incredible. And it's all decorated by hand, cut out. And it's it's from Sam Smith. And I don't know, I, I can't really read it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit and I'm going to kind of see if I can translate, not translate it but read it, it's in English. But it, it was a game or something because these would have been flipped over um, and then opened up like a game of chance, you know? Because um, one of it says, I choose you. Oh my God. It's so, I mean, isn't that fabulous? So that was in here. And then let's see if I could push this up without knocking my camera on the floor so you guys can see. But down here, right, the desk, um, the desk would have been set up the opposite way because it's sloping down. But you open it up, right, this beautiful, I think this is rosewood, I'm not sure. But here's his stamp for his signature in ivory, right? And I know this comes apart. Something's going on. Who knows, you know, what's in here. But I'm not going to mess around with it. Here's his little wax seals that he would have, the captain would have sealed his correspondence with. And then letters. And you, I have to be so careful. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna open them now. I want to be really careful. But look at that beautiful script. So that's in here. But the other thing is that made me kind of sad was this. It says here Rosewood Desk, 1822, and somebody in this family, in his family, Captain Alva Johnson's family, had kept this in the family, and it says. This old desk belonged to Sea Captain Alva Johnson, a relative of Mother Tracy's, Clara Buell Tracy. Uncle Alvy was her great uncle. He lived in Philadelphia, married the daughter of a well-to-do Philadelphia man. And it goes on about a, a burial vault, cemetery, um, the de and back here, it says it came into the family's possession in 1966. So there's this whole history here. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, this woman had to sell it or she didn't want it. And there's just all these little notes about it. You know, somebody else had written a history back in 1966 when it came back into the family. And I was just like, oh my God, this is incredible. Look at the little, there's a little area here for treasures with a little ivory knob. This opens up, oops, <laughs> but it has a little silver, uh, I mean, silk ribbon. But anyway, you can lift that up and there's a place to put things. And all of this comes apart. Nothing's glued. It all comes apart, but look at the, his ink wells, his ink bottles. You could see, boy, are these old when you look at the bottom, right? Absolutely gorgeous. 
and I am obsessed with it. I don't, <laughs> I try not to mess around with it too much. This is wool. This opens up also. There's a place to put more treasures and it has a draw down here, which I haven't been able to open and I'm not going to force it. But I love stuff like this. You could see it's got that campaign furniture. This is all brass and rosewood. And again, the whole thing lifts apart. Um, but I'm obsessed with things like this. And it's been a lifelong hobby of mine. Look at Al, you know, and this man, the sea captain, must have opened this a million times writing because that's how they communicated and I am going to keep everything together and hopefully when I'm gone my sons you know will kind of keep this around because it's just so much history but that is oh I have to put this back I like to keep everything together that is my um, obsession and when I'm painting pieces I want to create paint finishes that are going to get beautiful and more beautiful as they age. Um, here's a quilt I made, by the way. It, this, was, this has got to be 25 years old, but all hand-pieced and um, hand-quilted, all cotton. The batting is cotton because I'm like... <laughs> Somebody will find it in some, you know, craft fair in a hundred years and say, oh, look at that. It's all hand on somebody like me. Now, that's a little bit about me and show and tell. What I want to show you guys now, and I'm going to bring this so I can get closer and then go back to there I am. I want to show you guys how to repair a little box. Now I do collect these containers, boxes, antiques, and um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. It's really beautiful. It's got this heavily, you know, it's made from molding. Somebody put, whoops, put this together from molding, but it's falling apart. So I want to show you how to glue um, it back together. Right here and right here in the front are coming apart. So I'm going to show you how I glue it. I'm going to move my camera closer. Let's see if that, yeah, that's good. And then move this down. So what you need for something like this, okay, is some, I'm using tight bond, but I'm using tight bond um, tight bond wood glue so I should turn that upside down put it next to my coffee and I've got some water some paper towels somewhere to put my glue and a brush okay let me get comfortable <laughs> If you guys are collectors out there, let me know. I love, I love to meet other people who collect stuff. Share what you collect. Okay, so what my plan is here, and I, I um, consulted the expert, my husband, who, who on the side does woodworking, is I'm going to first glue this joint. I'm going to put elastics around the box to hold it all together. When that's dry, with the elastics still around the box, I'm gonna glue in this little triangular corner joint here. And what I'm gonna do to keep it pressed up to the side is I'm gonna take a, a, a wood stir like this and just put a little bit of like newspaper or something behind it. Not enough pressure to push it out, but just to hold that in place while the glue dries. So that, that's the second step. You're not gonna see it on camera, but you are gonna see how I 
do this first step. So let me grab my tight bond. And this has a different, hmm, I'm gonna do this. It has a different um, spout than the other one. I love that little cap on the other one. Okay, but this, this glue is fabulous. You could also use Elmer's wood glue. That works really well. All right. So I'm just gonna fill up. There's, it's still attached at the bottom somehow. So I'm just gonna glue right inside that joint. And it was originally glue. There's only nails in the back. I'm putting a little bit on both sides. Actually, not a little bit. I'm being generous. And then go over here. Same thing. And if you have a fine piece like the desk I just showed you, I recommend any repairs don't be done by a professional. Bring it to somebody who knows what they're doing so you don't ruin it. All right, so I'm gonna press this in and then I'm gonna close the top, get my elastics and put these around. I don't think I could, this one is a little too short. Okay, that's good. That one's too brittle. Now, here's the thing. There's some glue being pushed out, right? See it there? We don't wanna leave that, we gotta get rid of that. So get a piece of paper towel, put it in some clean water, and you have to wipe that away or it's gonna mess up the whole look of your, your beautiful piece. So I'm doing this on both sides. Now I, I've had this little box for a long time and I used to use it when I did shows. I would put cash in it and receipts. And I just love it. And I'm always like, gee, should I do something to it? <laughs> you know, what, what should I do to it? Somebody left their rings. I might just wax it and call it a day and use it for some little treasures. Because I do, I just love it. I love it. I don't, I think it's mahogany and it's solid mahogany. All right. Dry off those corners. I'm gonna let this dry. Hey, Danielle, how are you? I'm showing how to repair. <laughs> I'm showing off my little obsessions, Danielle, my, my collect, the things that I collect and love. So make sure you check out the beginning. <laughs> oh, Danielle, happy Friday, it's Friday. I'm so excited about the weekend, I really am. I'm gonna go out and look at where I'm gonna plant stuff. Um, but anyway, you guys, I'm going to let this dry for 24 hours, okay? And then remember, the second part of this is this corner piece that I'm going to put the glue on both sides. Same thing here. Press it in. I'm leaving the elastics around the piece to hold it all together. I'm going to take a paint stick, put that in, and... I don't want to create so much tension, it puts tension on this corner, but I want that corner piece to be held in while the glue dries. So I'll put some newspaper or card, cardboard behind it 
to, um, to create a little bit of tension. Oh, good, Danielle, absolutely. Go back and, and look at that replay and then share with me, Danielle, if you have any collections, anything you love, um, anything you found yourself collecting since you were a kid that you just, every time you see it, you have to have it. I know there are people I've seen who collect um, thimbles, scissors, antique tools, um, me, it's furniture and stuff, fabric, quilts, that kind of thing. And honestly, I think that's what's influenced me to create the kind of paint finishes I do. And for you guys that are taking the antique um, paint finish workshop, you know, that's the roots of, of all of that. You know, I want to recreate those beautiful antique uh, paint finishes and regular wood finishes that are just going to get more beautiful as they age. It's my obsession. So you guys, happy Friday. Danielle, thank you so much for joining me. It's so good to see a friend here on uh, Facebook and YouTube. I am now streaming these right over to YouTube. So um, that kind of makes things a little bit easier. So go out, do some thrifting. There are going to be shows. I'm sure there are already uh, flea markets and antique shows where you can find some cool stuff. And don't be intimidated when you need to do a little repair like this. There's always a way to do it. And it's okay if your piece has some scars. You know, it's telling you a story. All right, you guys. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. Danielle, have a wonderful weekend. 